Rick Wallace, once again dropping in on you uh, to talk about a few things. It's Sunday and I'm actually in the office. I've been here for a little while, had some uh, things to do from an event that I held yesterday. Had to get some follow out emails out to uh, attendees and uh, do, do a few other things. And I decided to talk to you about something. I'm just, you know, looking at some things and I see someone that said something that was really powerful uh i believe it was it they said that one of our great, greatest problems as a race is that we are consistently trying to consult trying to resolve collective issues with an individual mindset and then they follow with this is what happens when you put an eastern mind into a western classroom for 12 hours um and I want to just kind of focus on that for a minute. <clears throat> it was Albert Einstein that said, you can never solve the problem using the thinking that created it. And one of the things that we tend to do is we tend to so attempt to solve the dilemma of this white racial caste system by using the thinking the thinking inculcated into our minds throughout our lives through what they call the academic process uh, or the educational process and the true nature of education is preparation and empowerment. Uh, the one thing that we have not experienced in a collective manner is authentic and genuine education. We have been indoctrinated, we have been educated into a certain state of aloofness, individualism, consumerism, um, emotionalism, but we have not been truly educated in the sense of being prepared and empowered. Uh, there's a difference between academic achievement and being educated, and I think one of the problems we have is that we are a people of origin op uh, that operates and on a spiritual level much differently than our minds are trying to comprehend and solve situations on a mental and physical level. We are trying to take teachings from the oppressor to overcome the oppression. And we have a major issue. The other point in that statement is one of the b biggest issues we have, individualism. We put ourselves before the collective. It's what I want. It's what I don't want. I don't like that. I don't want to do that. And yet we're suffering on a collective level. We are being handled and dealt with on a collective level. And the only way that through individualism we can insulate ourselves even slightly is through the development of wealth, which becomes more difficult when you're not operating on a collective level. You get where I'm going with this. The very things that will insulate us require us to think collectively. Even if we want to insulate and protect ourselves on an individual level, it works better when we're operating as a collective. We are, by nature, uh, social creatures. We are, by nature, better when operating in a social construct in which everyone has a responsibility, everyone has a role, everyone understands. When we look at some of the things that are triggering us this week, the Rittenhouse trial, the the uh, anxiety surrounding the uh, trial of those men who murdered Ahmad Aubrey, uh, the killing of young Dolph, um, and so many other things, the uh, suicide of two young children uh, who had been abused by the mom. There's been a lot within the last seven to 10 days for us to process, and that's just on the surface. You gotta understand, for everything that you see in so, on, on social media, for everything you see on the news, for every article that you read, there are literally thousands going through similar situations and no one would ever know their name. I, I get calls daily of individuals who are looking to help their son in a precarious situation, looking to reach their daughter because of some things that they're going through, hoping to help themselves heal uh, because of things that they've experienced over the course of their life, 
sometimes going all the way back to childhood. Uh, and this is a constant, constant barrage of emails and phone calls and letters that come across my desk. And we do the best we can here to deal with it. But what we are looking at is such a catastrophic reality of un unhealed brokenness, unhealed and unaddressed trauma, uh, socially uh, influenced pathological behavior, um, and we see ourselves imploding and turning on one another. Uh, you've heard me say this more than probably you care to acknowledge, but I am really in tune with the principles of the African proverb that says, if there's no enemy on the inside, then the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. We must first correct the erroneous uh, and fallacious ideologies that govern our behavior and our thinking, ideologies um, that we adapt it from the oppressor, uh, thinking outside of a village and community mindset, caring only about oneself, um, not being willing to address the need to heal, finger pointing and blaming for the sake of avoiding accountability. All of these things are things that we really and truly need to address. And we must address it on a collective level. We must address it um, with a sense of intent and deliberate purpose. We must uh, be aware of things. I've said this before. We need to create think tanks uh, to address every possible issue and scenario. We need to have think tanks for education, think tanks for finance, think tanks for business operation, think tanks for community development, think tanks to defend against gentrification. Uh, and I can go on and on of the things that we need to have great minds working around the clock coming up with solutions uh, to many of the enigmatic issues that we face on a regular basis. It is imperative that we get out of our emotions. It's imperative that we stop pointing fingers and blaming because everybody has some culpability in this because everybody isn't fully engaged in the solution and we have a responsibility to the next generation to give them a head start beyond where we started so they don't have to fight as hard to get as far we have a responsibility to build a level of wealth that provides insulation and protection against many of the machinations and schemes that are plotted against us and planned against us and literally uh, woven through the fabric of every institution within this country. It's our responsibility. We cannot depend upon the oppressor to relieve the oppression. Uh, it is foolish. It has never been accomplished in, in the history of this world to convince the oppressor to raise their foot. Uh, liberation is something that's claimed. Liberation is something that is possessed. Liberation is something that is actively pursued and there has to be a level of commitment that goes beyond comfort see we don't want to get out of our comfort zones we don't want to literally step out and put ourselves at risk we want the prize but we don't want to go through the process we want the promise of liberation but we don't want to go through the process we don't want to step out and be what we need to be to our children to our communities to our marriages uh and 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 provide the things that need to be provided and i'm speaking both to male and female here i'm talking about that is a necessity for us to do better that is a demand on a spiritual level on a community level on a mental level, it is a demand that we rise up and move forward and take action and live out our pursuit, live out our desire, live out our wish. Stop sitting around and hoping somebody that has never acted on your behalf will all of a sudden change their habits and their behaviors to pursue your interests. Your interests does, do not in any way represent their interests, and that is the issue. And so you're going to have to understand that you're gonna to have to take up a mantle. You're gonna to have to take up 
a position. You're going to have to behave and, and carry yourself in a certain way. You're going to have to be willing to be held accountable. We definitely need a code of conduct in the black community. I wrote a code of conduct years ago and published it as a part of the blueprint. If you go to the Odyssey Project site at the Odyssey Project 21.top, you will see two things. If you scroll under uh, programs, um, you will see a bunch of programs that we offer, but you'll also see uh, the blueprint to black empowerment and you will see the code of conduct. The blueprint to black empowerment is something that we can literally follow. It is a comprehensive outline of what's necessary. Uh, I've had the privilege of actually running that by Dr. Claude Anderson, who I respect a great deal, and his wife, Joanne, and they signed off on it. Um, and yet, getting it to a point where we can adopt it on a national or universal level is, is, is the challenge. We want to complain about what's happening, but we don't want to take action. And that's the, the, that's the problem, that's the issue. So here's my challenge. We're going to have to engage one another outside of YouTube, outside of Facebook, outside of all of the things that are going on. We're gonna to have to engage each other. We're gonna to have to take up a mantle. We're gonna to have to do some work. And uh, so email me. Send me an inbox, DM me, message me, whatever it takes so that we can connect and we can start talking about the work that needs to be done. Because what I'm telling you is I got countless, literally, requests for help, and it's legitimate. I've checked it out. We've got young men being handled by the system for things they literally didn't do or this being overly mishandled by the system for for minor infractions that are being made major and they need somebody to represent them uh, they're not asking to be relieved from the consequences of their action they're asking that their action the consequences of their actions be fair and that their lives not be robbed from them and i think that's a reasonable uh expectation um and i don't believe in abandoning those who can be rehabilitated those who can be redeemed uh, and, it, and, it, and it has to be a way that we distinguish, you know, hey, is this person going to be a problem no matter what? Or is this person a person who made a mistake, made a poor choice? Because I know I've made poor choices. I made more than one. And I'm glad that I was able to have a second chance. I'm at, glad that I was able to grow into the person that I've become. I am so glad that life didn't end with that bad choice, if you get what I'm saying. There's so much that we need to do. There are so many women that are coming that are broken that need to be healed. There are so many men that are overwhelmed and just at the at their wits end, trying to be everything they can and having everything turn against them. There's so much going on, and they're at the doorsteps of the Odyssey Project. And I, I, I can't see me turning them away. So I'm doing everything I can to hear that. But we're going to need a collective effort in how we approach this we need to be more strategic we've got to come up with ways that we can be more effective in reaching these people they need to be reached they deserve to be reached uh now i believe that the incorrigible could should be left behind those who aren't going to try to change those who don't want to change those who just want to be a part of the problem they need to be left behind but the, those who are reaching out with a hand out deserve to be pulled up and it's going to take work it's going to take sacrifice it's going to take people who care and so we at the Odyssey Project are going to do that. And uh, I know a bunch of other my brothers who are doing their things, and they've committed as well. So we need everyone to get on board with this thing. We can talk all day until we're blue in the face, but we're going to have to at some point take action. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get off. Still have a lot to do, but uh, I want to remind you that we do need support. We're asking for support. Uh, look in the description box and you will see a way that you can support the work we do by either clicking the link or giving directly through our cash app account. But we definitely need the love and support. Time to make a difference. On that note, I'm out of here.